Best short films for lifelong learning, recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love, with your host, Richard Lee. I've got a friend that's started to do a little bit of sharing stuff online, but there's a trade-off between how much time you do doing that and how much time you spend preparing lessons and all the rest. How do you balance that? I mean, you've done a lot of stuff online. How does that work for you? Well, for me, that's my fun time, like creating the lessons and sharing stuff with other people. That's fun for me. Other people like to garden or cook or you know, I don't clean the house. I don't cook. I don't knit. I like to make lessons. So, you know, in my free time, that's what I do. I don't consider it work really. It's it's a craft all its own. It is. It's, it's like being an artist. Let's talk about one of the first films that you've chosen, this uh, film called The Cow Who Wanted to Be a Hamburger. I just love how the the calf sees the billboard and gets so excited about the happy cow and he's just so misguided. So this is obviously a wonderful opportunity to talk to your students about the power and potential deception of advertising. Is that where it sits for you as far as planning out your teaching regime? It does. Um, I use that film in my media literacy class to introduce an advertising unit and we talk about persuasion in advertising and rhetoric and but I also like that other message in there that you know sometimes the thing that you think that you want ends up really not being what you thought it was but I definitely do a whole lesson on advertising and messages in the media and figuring out what it is you're really getting yeah and one of the things I was impressed with your notes too you you created something called a sketch note, um, which to me, you know, it's an illustration of a big idea. And in this case, it was, you've called it uh, deathly hellos of persuasion in advertising. Can you talk more generally about this idea of making diagrams out of out of big concepts and educational ideas you're trying to get across? Um, well, I do do a lot of sketch notes in, in the classroom. Um, that's a whole nother topic to go into. That would take a long time. But that particular sketch note was one of the favorites that we did. I did the Harry Potter version because I'm a big fan of Harry Potter. Can you see my wall in my office up there? I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm a big Harry Potter fan. So I thought, how can I apply the characters in this film to the ideas of rhetoric? And you have Ron, who's appealing to the emotions because he's kind of an emotional character and Hermione who's very logical so we took notes about what rhetoric is but applied them to the different characters and my students started noticing that characters in other books that they were reading also had these there was like a three character group that also had these that could fit into these categories so someone did a Hunger Games one Um, Someone did a Spongebob one. So all of my students were creating these like triangle diagram things with characters from shows or books or whatever that they liked, but applying these ideas of rhetoric to the characters. Let's talk about uh, another film that you've chosen, and this one is called The Dam Keeper. Every eight hours, the dam required a wind-up. Forgetting this chore would be deadly. I was the dam keeper. I like to pair the films with novels that we're reading or things that we're learning about because I feel like it kind of extends their thinking about it. And that one we we used with a novel that we were reading. It was called The One and Only Ivan. It's about a gorilla in a zoo and... The characters and the dynamics and how a new character was introduced and it had this huge transformation or transformative effect on the main character was very similar. And so we did side-by-side plot mapping and talked about the similarities in the themes and stuff. And I liked the film for that purpose, so we didn't watch it a bunch. 
Yeah. There's the whole media analysis side, which you, you've written notes about, but um, one of the themes you pick up on is bullying, which is always a big topic, um, particularly, you know, moving into the higher levels of middle years. Um, do you think this is a film that would be easy enough for, say, a welfare teacher or someone interested in student wellbeing to raise the issue of bullying and get students talking about it? Oh, definitely. That's one of the reasons I like it too. I want to be able to teach things, but I also like it when there's a really good message involved. And this is a perfect example of that because there's a great message here about bullying and being resilient and perseverance and all of that stuff. So the last film you've chosen is called La Luna. Good. I always like to take notes on my first impressions of a film before I see what anyone else has said about it. And on watching this, I was absolutely taken in another direction altogether. So I was taken in the direction of fantasy and the whole idea that we can imagine whatever we like. And and so after having a look at your notes and going, oh yeah, there was all that stuff about values and family and all that kind of thing. But it got me wondering again about how we choose films. On, on the one hand, do you start by saying, here's a great film, I wonder how I can use it? Or do you go, here's something I want to teach, let me go and find a film for it? How do you do it? For me, it's generally, I see a film and I really like it. It's great. Then I figure out how I'm going to use it. So I come across the film. I love it. And then I'll watch it a bunch of times. What can I teach with this film? How can I justify watching a movie in class? (laughs) Because that's what they call it, really. You're watching a movie, but it's so much more than that. It really is, yeah. So talk me through this How to Hyperdoc a Short Film. Well, the first thing is finding a good film. Find a film that you really love, that you want to share. And then um, I watch the film multiple times. And I usually start with the plot, just kind of outlining the plot and what's the theme. And then, you know, what are some questions? That's a big driving force for me with my lessons is a guiding question, like a big question that's going to really get them thinking throughout the entire lesson. And then um, I watch it and I just watch it. Every time I'm doing something new, I watch the film again and I take notes and I have huge binders of notes from films. I look for literary devices that I might want to teach. And sometimes how I choose the film is I see a film and it connects to something else that we're reading or, you know, something we're talking about in class. So if it, if it didn't happen that way that I chose the film, then as I'm watching it, I think about, you know, what does this connect to that we're learning? And then I think about how are the students going to show me that they learned what it is I wanted them to learn throughout this lesson. So like with the cow that wanted to be a hamburger, they had to make a billboard. There's always some different kind of project. I want the students to be creating something. It's not just about consuming the media of a short film. I want them to be creating something based on what they've learned. And then if they're really into what we're doing, because I will have kids that are just so excited about what we're doing and they want to do more and then, oh, we're moving on. Well, I, I try to include always in my lessons some way for them to take it to the next level. Like, oh, you really like this film? Here's how you could create a film about this or something. Few had ever been on the other side of the dam and seen the cloud. A blanket of filth. It suffocated everything. I want them to be thinking. And so I want to share media with them that makes them think. I don't want to tell them what to think. Like, I want to share something with them that makes them think. To listen to the full conversation, join us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher. For extra notes and community support, join our Facebook group today.